and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. 2018 was unstoppable for PlayStation exclusives. Games like Spider-Man, Detroit Become Human, Astro Bot, and the behemoth that was God of War, to name but a few. Exclusivity remains the key difference between platforms in this day and age. Experiences we can only obtain in one place. PlayStation has some damn impressive offerings releasing throughout 2019 and beyond. So here's the top 10 most anticipated PlayStation 4 exclusives we can't wait to get our hands on. Let me know which is your favourite and upvote those you're looking forward to and we'll see which one comes out on top. So if you're ready, let's do this. You know where I have to start. The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> Did you ever play the original Last of Us? If you did, you'll know why part 2 is in such high demand. The brilliance of the storytelling may be the standout point, but the gameplay mechanics, the multiplayer experience and even the soundtrack all contributed to making the first part of Joel and Ellie's story unmissable. The original game scored so many perfect 10 out of 10 scores that it gave us a new benchmark for other games to aspire to. But I'm getting sidetracked by history. What is The Last of Us Part 2? Using interviews and previews we can build an understanding. The core game mechanics will stay the same, with tense action sequences and tactical stealth the majority of the gameplay loop, with puzzles to complete during quieter sections. Following the attempt to cure the deadly infection turning the population into zombie-like creatures, the living population have become a little more militarised, with multiple communities popping up. In a world without rules, no one is safe, meaning the infected are the least of our problems. The details of the story are being kept secret from us, but we know Ellie and Joel will return, with a focus on vengeance. And judging by all the violence we've seen in the previews, we can all but guarantee The Last of Us Part 2 is a mature-themed game. I'll be recapping the events of the original game very soon, so please come back for a refresher closer to the time. Sucker Punch, the creators of Sly Cooper and the infamous series are back with a brand spanking new franchise, Ghost of Tsushima. Set in 1274 in a period of Japanese history we affectionately refer to as Feudal Japan. I bet you can guess why. Ghost of Tsushima places us in the shoes, or rather the Gita, of a legendary samurai warrior fighting the invasion of the Mongol Empire and taking back conquered towns for his countrymen. The samurai fighting styles you probably have in your head right now are definitely in the game, but we'll also be creating new combat tactics to get the upper edge in battle, so those sneaky ninja moves seen as lower class strategies could come in handy. Ghost of Tsushima is both action and stealth from a third person perspective with some light RPG elements, but it is most definitely a linear story with branching side quests. In that sense, it shares a similarity with God of War. Other noticeable inclusions see your faithful horse available to trek around the open world, which will be vast and varied. For vertical travel, we have a grappling hook too. And what's a samurai game without a duel to the death? There's plenty here to keep us hooked, even at this early stage, so expect huge Ghost of Tsushima news this year. Many games on the list are still awaiting a release date, so let's look at a game which is finished. It's ready to release. This is Days Gone. The release date has moved a few times in the past year or so, first tentatively said to release in late 2017, which then became 2018 and then February 2019, but now it's 100% set in stone. Days Gone releases on April 26th. So what the heck is Days Gone? Set after the zombie apocalypse, but these zombies are named Freakers, because the cool thing to do these days is distance yourself from the word zombie. Call them husks, walkers, the undead, the infected, the plagued, but never use the Z word. Looking at footage, it bears a striking resemblance to The Last of Us from the setting, the combat, and even the weapon crafting system. The way Days Gone distances itself from other zombie games, damn it, I said it again, is the sheer number of Freakers on screen at once. Look at this! Expect your PS4 to explode. Days Gone is fully open world with day-night cycles and dynamic weather systems too. Our character, Deacon, is a member of a biker gang and gets around on this beast, a motorcycle in the apocalypse. That will feel epic. Oh, and the best thing of all in Days Gone? Zombie bears confirmed. <laughs> Count me in. See you on April 26th. PSVR, PlayStation Virtual Reality, continues to be quietly given love in the background. In 2019, this continues, and here's a great game to look forward to, Blood and Truth. I've been trying to think of a way to sum this up in one sentence, and here it is, John Wick, The Game. 
Your movements are perfectly replicated on screen, from climbing a ladder, reloading a magazine or clip, or aiming down the sights. Think of it as instead of watching or commanding an action hero, you are that action hero. We play as Ryan Marks, a former SAS operative who is dragged back into action to save his family. Could that be more like an 80s or 90s action film? Love it. If you played the London Heist demo, you'll know the potential of Blood and Truth. The feedback from playable demos has been positive, and all we need now is a release date. The only problem with VR is how ridiculous we all look on the outside. But under that visor, you'll still be a badass. A game which has been lost in development hell for years now is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. First showcased in 2015, the game looked further into development than it actually was. I'm sure you're aware of the brilliant 1997 original version of Final Fantasy VII, or at least the uh, universal praise it received. The story followed Cloud Strife, a former Shinra soldier who joins a group of eco-warriors who want to save the world. Okay, I didn't do that story justice at all. The remake moves away from the typical JRPG turn-based combat and plays more akin to Kingdom Hearts. Speaking of Kingdom Hearts, the majority of that team will be switching their attentions to Final Fantasy VII Remake following Kingdom Hearts 3 release in January 2019. So maybe, just maybe, the Final Fantasy VII Remake will once again begin to gather traction and come closer to a release date in 2019. Here's something a little different, Erika. This is not a video game per se, it's an attempt to blur the lines between movies, video games and interactive storytelling. We won't be striving for a high score here or flexing our skills, we instead will be watching a real life movie and making decisions as we encounter them. Our understanding of Erika, the main character, is key to how the story unfolds. Think of it like a real life depiction of heavy rain with psychological impacts on the characters. Essentially Erika is movie night at home with multiple ways to complete the story. This gives it replayability, but unlike modern day video games, Erika will only last a few hours, which should be represented in the price. Expect Erika to cost the same as a Blu-ray rather than a AAA title. Playlink games have tried to bring a new aspect to home entertainment and in 2019 this may be the year it finally takes hold. Back in 2014, a hugely ambitious game was announced. This is wild. Set during the prehistoric Neolithic period in an infinite world. How can we simplify that? You're a caveman in a never-ending world. <laughs> In a gameplay showcase back in 2015, a shaman character was seen transforming into animals, an eagle in this example. The shaman was also able to call wild bears and use them as transport. In terms of combat, we've seen cannibal camps to plunder and once again, the spirit animals can be called in for assistance, like a flock of crows or a pack of wolves. The core of the game is survival and existing alongside or in opposition to others in the world. Inviting a dozen friends into your mini universe and exploring the endless vistas could be remarkable. Remarkable. But why the heck am I bringing this up after three years of quiet? Well, the studio behind Wild is currently and massively expanding, indicating this lost project has entered a new era of development. Could 2019 see Wild revealed in more detail? I have a sneaking suspicion it will. Media Molecule, the creators of Little Big Planet, are unbelievably close to releasing their new game, Dreams. It's difficult to surmise dreams, but if you've played Little Big Planet, it shares many similarities, primarily the ability to create and share content. The title Dream is essentially telling us to jump into the mind of others and experience their creativity. Unlike Little Big Planet, the tools don't simply limit us to building platformers. We could create every game genre imaginable, whether that's a shooter, a puzzle game, adventure title. If we can dream it, we can make it. For those worried about designing in Dreams, be aware that three stories will make up a campaign showcasing all the tools on offer. From that point, make your own or wait and play endless adventures made by others. Dreams in essence is another endless game that could last a lifetime. Have you heard of Concrete Genie? Meet Ash, a teenager bullied and belittled who isolates himself away from others. Sounds like a great feel-good story already, right? Well, stick with it because Ash has recently discovered a power. His artwork magically comes to life. Concrete Genie attempts to bring a new aspect to puzzle solving as your paintings interact with the world, opening new pathways or giving subtle hints. Each of Ash's creatures have abilities such as fire or electricity with far more to be revealed. Concrete Genie makes anyone feel like an artist, it really does. And as we revitalise a polluted old fishing town, we've got to be aware of those bullies who are out to stop Ash and his creations.
A game which has been an enigma since it was first revealed back in 2016 is Death Stranding. Hideo Kojima of Metal Gear fame is back and working with a celebrity cast to bring us Death Stranding. Almost three years later, we've seen in-game cinematics and a tiny selection of gameplay moments, but I'll be honest, I still have no idea what the heck is going on, <laughs> and that is the brilliance around the project. We have been told Death Stranding is an open world action game, and that's really it to be honest. We've seen a baby inside a jar, we've seen a baby inside a man, <laughs> and some sort of witchcraft too, invisible monsters, remember that? And the bionic woman. This is impossible to understand in the best possible way. We will receive more answers in 2019. Kojima has cryptically stated Death Stranding will release before the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and in the year the new Akira film is set, which so happens to be 2019. I personally believe Death Stranding will be a PS5 title as it will persuade more customers to get that console in their homes, but I'd love to be wrong. Time will tell, I suppose. So there we have it, 10 PlayStation exclusive games to play in 2019 and beyond. What's on top of your list to play? I personally can't wait to take on 100 Freakers in Days Gone and of course fight that freaking bear. The enigma of Death Stranding continues to baffle us all, but will it release on PS4 or PS5? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're still here at the end of the video, write, oh I love cavalry's here <laughs> in the comments and I will come and find you. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, it's been a pleasure, I'll see you next time. Don't worry, loves. Cavalry's here. <gasps>